Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Well, glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. There ain't going to be no singing tonight, but that's all right. We're going to get right into the Word of God right now and deal with a matter at hand in the spirit world that I know will touch your life forever. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, God. I'm going to entitle the message tonight, When God Gets the Urge to Purge. When God Gets the Urge to Purge. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Dobie, my brother, God bless you. I love you. I'll call you tonight if you're still up, or I'll talk to you tomorrow for sure. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of John, the second chapter, verse is uh, actually verse 15. And I'm going to pray before I preach. Father, Lord, I pray that tonight you would hide me behind the cross. I pray that none of my flesh be even around my words, Father, for my words are not mine, they're yours. Father, I know your word is already anointed, but I pray you bless the ears of the people to hear it and the hearts of the people to receive it, tear up the fallowed ground. And Lord, I thank you, Holy Ghost, for us casting our bread upon the water and you bringing it back as gold, even tonight, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Bless God, in the highest. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Now, if you've got your Bibles, we're going to be talking tonight about when God gets the urge to purge. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. John chapter 2, verse 15. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And I will be reading from the Amplified. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Please excuse my squeaky chair tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I need to put some oil on it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Let me actually go to verse 13. Now the Passover of the Jews was approaching. So Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple, the enclosure, he found the people who were selling oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers sitting after their ta at their tables and the money change and the money changers sitting at their tables I'm sorry I'm reading without no glasses tonight y'all and the light's kind of dim, so just bear with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. He made a whip of cords and drove them all out of the temple which the sheep, with the sheep and the oxen, and he scattered. Mm. Hold on. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. Then to those who sold the doves, he said, take these things away. Stop making my father's house a place of commerce, a place of banking. Jackie, God bless you. Hello, hello, hallelujah, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Stop making my father's house a house of commerce, place of commerce. His disciples remembered that it is written in the scriptures, zeal, love, concern for your house and its honor will consume me. Then the Jews restored 
Then the Jews retorted, What significant... What sign... Oh, wait a minute. Retorted, What sign... A testing miracle... Can you show us as proof of your authority for doing these things? Verse 19. Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews, verse 20. Then the Jews replied, it took 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? Verse 21, but he was speaking of the temple, which was his body. Verse 22, so when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said, and they believed and trusted in and relied on the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Let me tell you something, y'all. Sister Tanya, God bless you. I love you. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me say something. When God gets the urge to purge, just like the disciples did, we need to learn how to rely upon the Word of God. We need to, like the Scripture said, go into our prayer closet. Go behind us and shut the door, lock it. Don't let anybody in but you and God. And wait until the judgment of God has passed. Let me tell you something. When God gets the urge to purge, my friends, you're going to know about it. Amen. It ain't going to be a, is God judging? No, you're going to know God is judging. Amen. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You're going to know that God is judging. Now, let me tell you what it was that made God so upset. One, yes, they were trading in the court of the Gentiles, which is right outside of the synagogue. It, it was a part of the synagogue, but it was a place for Gentiles. And they sold things there. They sold rams and doves and oxen. But here's the thing. They had money with images on it. There was no images of idols to be going into the house of God. But do you know what? It, it's interesting. Spiritual adultery is in the house of God today. We got our own way of doing things. We, we know what God has said. We know what the Lord has told us to do. But Lord, I, I'm, I've just got this idea of how I can just improve things. What do we do? We end up messing things up worse. And we end up doing like these people did. These supposed to be members of high society. They ended up messing things up because of spiritual adultery. When you let spiritual adultery into the house of God, it will defile you as well as... Let me tell you something, my friends. Do you know Jesus called a member of the church out on this? When they were saying, oh, well, uh, who should we pay taxes to? Is it you? Or, you know, uh, who, who should we pay taxes to? Should we not give to, to Caesar or do we give to the church? And he said, let me see a coin. So they threw him a denarius, and the denarius, listen to this, y'all, the denarius would have had, it did have the emblem on it of Caesar. He said, whose portrait is on this coin, and whose description is on it? And they said, Caesar. He said, well, render unto Caesar the things 
that belong to Caesar and unto God the things that are God's. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and unto God what is God's. But do you know that that member of the temple realized something when he gave the money to Jesus? He had an image in his pocket of a man that thought himself God. Caesar Augustus called himself God. He thought of himself as a mighty big man, but let me tell you something. God was level in the playing field. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible teaches us that when the king of Babylon raided the temple, in Jerusalem, he found no image of their God. He found the uh, menorah and all the other wonderful, beautiful furniture of God in the house of God, but he didn't find an image. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. A true Jew cannot worship an image. That's why... One reason Jesus was so upset, the money that was going into the house of God had the emblem of adultery on it. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That was Matthew 22 and 20. Can you imagine the look on the face of that priest, that minister, when he realized what he just took out of his corn, coin purse. He just took out a denarius, which they were not allowed according to the Mosical Law. To the Mosical Law, they were not allowed to have that. And they lifted it up, meaning he realized his error after the Lord caught him on it. They was trying to trap him, and they ended up entrapping their self. Glory to God. They ended up entrapping themselves when they was trying to trap Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you imagine his face and how red he turned when he realized his, uh-oh. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. But let me say this. Here's where the messages are getting ready to take a turn, okay, y'all? Instead of waiting for a harbinger, a sign of the coming judgment, we need to repent. We need to turn to God before he gets the urge to purge. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's two ways that the Lord showed me this, y'all. Listen to this. We need to come to God before he gets the urge to purge, but we need to ask him to purge us to remove the spiritual in the spiritual unholiness in our life the spiritual mildew of our soul if you will because see Psalms 51 and 7 David said purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean Hyssop was both an herbal plant and a cleansing plant. It was used in the practice of cleansing the temple and cleansing the people. Listen to this, y'all. And so when he was saying, purge me with hyssop, watch this. Did you know that hyssop, when crushed, actually cleans garments with spots. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. 
Check this out, y'all. Exodus 12 and 22, when the blood was to be applied to the doorpost of the house, according to the Bible, before they left Egypt, when the blood was to be applied in the house, uh, on the top of the doorpost, and on the sides of the lintel, but not on the bottom part, not on the threshing floor. Why not on the threshing floor? Because the floor, the, the, the blood is so holy, it is not ever meant to be trampled underfoot. But when you and I continually go in the house of God and continually trudge through the sin that we've asked God to forgive us for and we keep living in it and going back to it, let me tell you what happens. We are trampling the precious blood of Jesus. We are trampling the precious blood of Jesus. Just like those Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the reason they were sad, you see, they, they didn't have Jesus, so they were sad, you see. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. But the person that was brought before the priesthood was actually the hyssop was bound together and made like a brush. And they would take the blood of the lamb and they would put the blood of the lamb on the person and declare them clean from their stain of their soul. Ooh, well, don't that sound familiar to you, my friend? Good Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So what David was actually saying when he said, purge me with hyssop. Actually, do you know that hyssop is a gentle plant? It's a humble plant. It's the only plant that don't stick straight up. It leans forward. It bows itself. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I hope somebody will share this message tonight in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See, I've heard it said for years, and I've even preached it for years. We need to get rid of our idols before our idols get rid of us. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So if we need to get rid of our idols before our idols get rid of us, listen to this. Before God purges his house, see, because a lot of people don't understand this. Judgment begins in the house of God. It don't begin outside the house. It begins from within. Just like Jesus showed them with the cleansing of the temple, he cleansed it from within to make room for a movement without. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something, my friends. Did you know when Jesus rose from the dead that the tomb became a womb it it became it went from trans, it transitioned from a place of death to a place of everlasting life are you hearing me praise god thank you lord jesus praise the lord amen listen to me y'all Jeanette, god bless you hallelujah amen thank you jesus praise god listen to me When David was saying, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be cleansed. What he was saying was this. Lord, purge me with the blood of the lamb. Cover me in the blood of the lamb. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me say it like this. Why did I use those two scriptures earlier about purging? Because let me show you this. A lot of people are spiritually condemning themselves and they don't even realize it because they think that God or God's people, let me say it like that, 
that the people of God care about one thing. About money. Well, let me tell you something. God wiped the temple clean. He cleaned the slate. Everybody that was in spiritual debt, God went and he set them free. He said, you, you know, he basically cleared out the gambling house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And those that were in legal obligation to those that was doing illegal stuff, God cleared the schedule for them. He cleared the slate. What do you think he did when he uh, when he uh, went fishing that day? See, Rome had Jerusalem, God's people, under such financial bondage to them that they couldn't even get ahead. Any little bit of finances they brought in, Rome took out. It's like the IRS. Ooh, did I say that? <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. But look at this. Jesus, in one day, tells them, leave your nets and follow me. Tells the disciples, the ones that was told that they would never qualify to do anything for God. They was told you might as well go find a livelihood. And they went to be fishermen. See, uh, fish was a form of currency back then. Just like the goats and the oxen and all this other stuff that we just read about. It was a taxation. It was a, it was a way of feeding your family. Well, Jesus told them to cast the net to one side of the boat. When they cast the net to one side of the boat, it began to sink because there were that many fish. And the Bible said that they called for their comrades in arms to come and help them. Well, when they called for their comrades in arms, the Bible said their boat began to sink because there were so many fish that the nets began to break. And then the Bible said that when Jesus got done with Peter on the, on the boat lesson that day, Peter fell at Jesus' knees and said, Lord, forgive me. And he said, but you need to, he said, Lord, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. He was really asking for forgiveness. He was really asking for help. He said, I, I know you're holy. He said, Lord, I, I have missed the mark in my life because... You're worthy. You're holy. And he says, I'm, I am I ain't a good man. I ain't a perfect man. And Jesus said, you just the man I want. You know what? When people have truly stood in the presence of God, let me tell you what happens. They don't feel worthy. If you ever feel worthy to stand in God's presence, buddy, you better humble yourself. Nobody's worthy except through the blood of Jesus. If you think you can get there any other way, you're an idiot. You can't get to the Father except through the Son, through the shed blood of the cross. Let me help you out with something. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I hope somebody loves this message and that it's helping them out in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. So, David was asking the Lord to apply the blood of the lamb that they would put in the temple on him. He caught a revelation in the hyssop. And it's interesting the one who purged our sins had hyssop applied to his lips from the cross. John 19, 29. Do you know, all right, there's three types of purging. There's the purging that comes 
when the harbingers are ignored. The harbingers are God's warning of coming judgment. When they are ignored, a purging will take place. But I'm not done yet. The best way we can keep ourselves in favor with God is ask him, purge me with hyssop, God. Purge me and cover me in your blood, Lord Jesus. Get me free from me. Let me live for you, Jesus. That's what we need to pray. Because let me tell you, if, if there, we, well, let me tell you, the government of America, the, the, the whole nation is about to fall under the judgment of God. But before it falls under the canopy of God's judgment, hey, Daniel, God bless you. I love you, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Before America's nation falls under the judgment of God, God will judge the house, his body. Why? One, because judgment begins in the house of God. Two, because if we had not allowed it to happen in Congress, in the White House, if we would have stood up and said, no, this is what the Lord says. America was founded on the principles of faith. But, no, we let it slip. We let it slide. And now we have abortion and homosexuality and gay marriage and, and all of this stuff. And what it is, is the sins of America, just like Israel, are piling up on them. God's letting it grow to a certain extent. But you know what? Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. He told Peter and James and all of them, he said, follow me. When they saw God in flesh eliminate the debt of Rome. Literally, God that day for them broke the back of poverty off of their life when he called the fish from the water. Do you know, I wonder how many hours or days it took to count all them fish that was brought in because Rome got wiped out. It was the biggest debt that Rome had with Peter. And Peter got Paid off. He, he paid Rome off. It was like paying off the mob. And paid them off completely with interest. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And still had enough to provide for his family. Because after that, you don't see them going fishing. Where they do. They're following Jesus. He set them free. He said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. I've got greater plans for you than the government ever could. I got greater plans for you than that job had for you. I got greater plans for you than your family has for you. Why don't you take everything and leave it here and follow me? Because no common sense would be made for a man to leave his fishing net there. He would not leave his briefcase with his private information right there on the beach, but that's what they did right there. They they beached their past, and they left it there and followed Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What about the woman of the well? The Bible said she left her water pot there. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It said that she left her water pot there and went and told about Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Ezekiel had a vision, and because of the vision, he left the idea of being a priest and became a prophet of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He abandoned the idea of becoming a priest and followed after the Lord as a prophet of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But every time we read in the Bible, we find the same common denominator from Moses onward. Moses fell down and worshiped the Lord at his feet. Abraham, he, he, Abraham worshiped him. They couldn't stand in his presence. 
John, the cousin of Jesus, who was actually living for the Lord and doing what he was supposed to do, felt unholy and unworthy in the presence of the Almighty God. And he said, whoa, I, 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 I can't unloose his sandals. The thongs of his sandals I can't unloose. I'm not worthy. But then Jesus, just like with John, when John fell at his feet as a dead man and worshipped him, guess what happened? Jesus touched his right shoulder, the right hand of fellowship, and he said, John, stand up on your feet, son. I got something for you to do. You know, he, he didn't feel worthy. He didn't feel worthy to write the last book of the Bible. But he but the Lord said, John, stand up on your feet, son. I got something I need to have done. I'm in need of you. You know, I tell you, I finally figured it out through another minister of God, another brother in Christ, why Peter fell asleep in the prison. Even though his death was the same day that James had died. James had died. His widow was preparing for James's funeral, a home going, whatever you want to call it. And John, uh, Peter's in the prison, and he's preaching, and he falls asleep. Why? Scripture just told you. Right before we close the, the um, right before I close this message, I want you to know the book of John, chapter two, I believe it's the twenty-first verse, records it. After they seen this, after his resurrection, they believed his words. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. So Peter hadn't been on assignment that long. Christ had been gone for about maybe 30 years off of the earth. And let me tell you what. Peter wasn't old. But God told him, he said, when you were old, talking about his death, he said, they will pick you up and take you and make you go places you wish not to go. Sound like a nursing home, don't it? <laughs> but he said, they will pick you up and take you to places that you don't want to go when you're old. Peter wasn't old when he was facing a death sentence. The Bible said they believed the word of the Lord. After he had resurrected, they believed his word. So when it came to that, he knew, I'm not going to die. I'm not an old man. 50-ish, 60 is that ain't old. I ain't going to die yet. It's not my time. And uh, he didn't. God got him out of the prison. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When you begin to learn to rest in the Word, on the Word, let me tell you, the Word will work for you when you learn to work the Word. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody needed to hear this message tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, Lord. But Jesus purged our sins at the cross. So the three steps of purging. First steps, when you ignore the judgment of God. That's when purging will happen. Second purge can happen if you ask God to cleanse you up and get you right to meet him before a judgment comes. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. That's the second one right there. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Third one. 1 Corinthians 5 and 13, Paul talked about how he had to purge himself of other people that he was around that meant no good for his ministry, that, that meant to do the church harm. He said, I had to purge myself from them people. Those people that were saying and doing things that they knew wouldn't right and still doing them. He said, I had to purge myself from them. So I looked up the definition of purge, and it said to purge, 
to get rid of or unwanted feelings. Second one, to violently remove said person or event or thing from your life. It's time that we get the urge to be purged before God gets the urge to purge. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. You might love people and be even related to them, but sometimes God's got to cut some limbs off the family tree just to make the tree bloom. Glory to God. That's a word right there in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, if you're out there and you're watching this telecast tonight and you're saying, Brother HR, I don't know Jesus like I should know him. I've known him religiously, but I've never had a true relationship with Jesus. I've used grace as a crutch to sin. If that's you, pray with me this prayer. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe you died on the cross that God the Father raised you from the dead and I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit that I might make heaven my home. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Father, I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance. Father, fill everybody watching with the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that bell notification for more videos just like this on YouTube. Amen. I love you. God bless you. See you in the next meeting. Love you. Bye-bye. Hallelujah.